Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to present the Journal of uh, Cultural Heritage Crime, not only as its co-director, but also on behalf of the founder and general director of the magazine, Dr. Serena Epifani, who unfortunately couldn't be here <laughs> to share the stage, so to speak. Um, first, uh, I will uh, illustrate the scope and the purpose of uh, our editorial project. Then I will show you some of the contents and social media data that we have collected so far. Um, so, as we have already seen, crimes against cultural heritage crucially damage history and cultural identity of, of peoples. Unfortunately, the removal uh, of archaeological materials, illegal art trafficking, damaging to historical sites and monuments appear daily on law enforcement reports uh, uh, what is more, <laughs> the responsible, even when identified and taken into custody, are too often not adequately punished. Uh, the looting of antiquities and the obsessive attention towards uh, uh, works of art are, of course, uh, uh, not a new phenomenon. Uh, in the past, especially in conflict situations, uh, what we now call uh, cultural heritage has often been subject to destruction and plunder. Today, these phenomena bear some distinctive characteristics uh, which are direct evidence of our modern times. For example, it is widely documented the use of the Internet for the illegal market of archaeological finds from war better territories uh, such as Syria, as we know, and Libya. The development of complex crime networks and the involvement of the international organized crime which has been lately drawing from the art and antiquities market a multi-million dollar business is also well known. So it is against this background that we conceived and developed the project of the Journal of Cultural Heritage Crime. This is a specialized online magazine which deals with multiple issues concerning the prote uh, pr protection and enhancement of cultural heritage. Special attention is dedicated uh, to those measures undertaken to counter illegal trafficking of archaeological finds and works of art, but we also focus on cases of recovery of stolen cultural goods. Uh, this editorial project is designed as a new in-depth portal, um, the first website of the kind, at least in Italy, totally dedicated to the crimes uh, threatening and impacting on our cultural heritage on an everyday basis. The evident lack of attention by the national non-specialized press to accurate information about cultural heritage issues has been the main spur urging us to carry out such a project. As a matter of fact, events involving our cultural heritage are almost always treated as third-class news, or when they reach the honor to, of the Chronicle, uh, they are often misleadingly or partially reported. On the other hand, even specialized magazines are more interested in presenting appealing historical or artistic topics or exciting new archaeological discoveries rather than dealing with issues such as art trafficking. So we felt the need to fill the gap between facts and people. Nowadays, smart and careful use of modern technologies allows fast access to information more than ever in the past, of course. Still, articles about cultural heritage are usually labeled as curiosity and uh, on Italian online journals, they mostly appear under the heading shows or uh, uh, generically culture sections. So devising a specific website seemed therefore the ideal solution to convey such news in the most immediate way and to finally give them the dignity of the first page. Through rigorous and up-to-date information, the project aims to contribute to countering crimes against cultural heritage by raising public awareness about such crimes. We actually wish to support in this way the efforts of those who are engaged in the everyday protection and enhancement of our cultural heritage. Launched in September 2000, 2018, after a few preliminary months of organization, the Journal of a Cultural Heritage Crime is an online magazine combining feature articles published on its website with a targeted social media strategy. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn are in fact pivotal tools to communicate effectively to a wide public 
and their impact cannot be underestimated uh, even in our field. A great ambition of this project is precisely to interact with the general public, increasing people's interest and involving them directly in heritage protection. Comments and reports on risk or damage situations for monuments and works of art are therefore welcome and encouraged on our social media pages. The project is run by a small team, <laughs> for now, of heritage protect professionals. The editorial board includes archaeologists, art historians, conservators, archivists and jurists. Besides, we collaborate with scholars and specialists in different fields who help us give our readers an in-depth look into several topics involving crimes against heritage. So, as you can see on our uh, homepage, if you like, you can browse uh, <laughs> at, the, at the link. Uh, we publish every week one or two feature articles about art crime, art security and art legislations, especially considering thefts, fakes and forgery, uh, damaging, looting, neglect, international trafficking of cultural heritage, uh, seizures by law enforcement, recoveries and restitution of stolen or looted goods. On our portal you will also find original and interesting interviews with experts and protagonists, for bad or for good, in some cases, of the heritage field. And moreover, sections dedicated to the reviews of, of movies and documentaries, as well as of, of bestseller books about cultural heritage issues. Besides uh, these main topics, uh, we pay great attention to presenting our readers uh, with useful information about events, uh, exhibitions, conferences or workshops specifically regarding cultural heritage protection. The most... Uh, the most... Uh, sorry, the most relevant co occurrences are collected in a monthly schedule, as you can see here. Oh, no. Here. Um, and some of them are singularly pointed out uh, as flash uh, or, art or feature articles. Another key appointment with our magazine is the weekly press review, uh, where we arrange the most significant news, uh, both nationally and internationally published during the week by journals, newspapers and blogs. On the other hand, you shall also easily browse the section Sala Stampa, that is the, the press room, and uh, find up to date news uh, organized by the subject. Uh, here. Um, together with the helpful list, uh, listings of latest notices released by the main Italian press agencies. The Carabinieri Command for the Protection of Cultural Heritage, the Guardia di Finanza, here you have these uh, notices, uh, the press agencies, um, and of course also the uh, institutions uh, uh, as the MIBAC. Interesting of official statements uh, about museums or exhibitions, um, as well as relevant uh, institutional reports, are instead uh, displayed uh, directly on the home page uh, under press release. As you can see at the moment the, the website is mostly in Italian so that's actually an issue. <laughs> this occurred because our first purpose was to get Italian people involved and interesting in their own heritage but of course uh, the next step will be to reach out to a wider community and deal with international issues as well. We actually aim to facilitate networking among heritage professionals and keep them also connected to the non-specialized public in order to spread accurate information. We would be really glad to share news and collaborate with foreign scholars and accordingly we open on our portal a new section headed international. Papers in other languages will be gathered here, thus expanding the range of topics and uh, points of view covered by the journal. Since we started the project in September uh, 2018, we have also managed to become partners with two museums and a foundation. The Archaeological Museum Lanciani, 
Guidonia Monticello near Rome. The Maya Museum, this is a, a, a really interesting museum uh, of war hostage art, and the Hansel Ruby Foundation. From our homepage, you can be immediately directed to the customized pages that we have dedicated to each partner. Such networking activity is really important and meaningful to us, allowing us to arrange or sponsor events and dissemination conferences. Another main point for our project is the collaboration with the institutions, especially the Carabinieri Command for the Protection of Cultural Heritage, to which we have reserved a special section on our website. Here we collect all the TPC official reports, the list of exhibits and events organized by the Carabinieri and the articles regarding their investigations. As we have, as I have already underlined, we take great care in trying to involve the general public in the discussion about heritage issues, because if we talk about, uh, about it uh, just among each other, it doesn't work. So, uh, but the, before moving to the social media, I would like to remark another feature of our portal that is the specific sec section. It's here. That is uh, um, segnalati da voi. Oh, okay. Segnalati da voi, which is actually a section where we gather photographic evidence of damaging, looting, or other issues directly reported by our readers. Uh, these records uh, uh, may be sent uh, by email at our address, uh, specific address, uh, or notified on social media. And then we come to social media. Each social media has a personalized uh, strategy conceived uh, by the administrator of the page in coordination with both the directors of the journal. In the last uh, few months, uh, we adopted communication partner the adopted communication pattern has seen a rapid boost and an increasing success. Statistics confirm a fast growth, both in views and in interactions. So, these are our data. Um, considering that the portal is just is online uh, just since uh, uh, <laughs> September 2018, as WordPress data show, uh, between September 2018 and April uh, uh, the 18th, uh, 20, uh, 2018, the website uh, reached uh, 16,277 views, mostly related to Italian readers. Again, nonetheless, uh, we've got views uh, from both the European and extra European, and extra European countries. Uh, as the chart shows, uh, there is an interesting number of views. Uh, from the US and the European country, uh, which of course are more involved in the trafficking uh, in the antiquities market in general. But it's also interesting that we have also reached, uh, even if by a small number, and a broad set of countries. Uh, and you can see, as you can see uh, here, where you have all, even someone from Tanzania <laughs> who is following us. <laughs> So, um, taking a look uh, at uh, the list uh, of published uh, articles uh, dating April uh, 18th, we notice that the most engaging one is the interview with a looter, uh, followed uh, by a paper addressing the questionable use uh, of ancient walls uh, as a sporting set. So, these data suggest that what topics uh, are more appealing to people? that is the looting phenomenon and how everyday life may damage our cultural heritage. As we'll, as we'll see later, the issue of ancient walls climbing has had the most engaging reactions on social media with a broad spectrum of different opinions. Data from Twitter show an interesting number of views, of which the 27% is from Italy and the rest from other countries. This suggests that this kind of social media would require more internationally oriented communication, even if based on articles written in Italian. In the near future, it is of course our intention to develop and increase this feature. Nonetheless, the insights 
look promising, uh, reaching a total of 300 followers and 51,300 visualization in total. Anyway, the most effective kind of social media is, without any, any doubt, uh, Facebook, uh, that reach, uh, reached a number of 2,725 followers, uh, with steady and fast growth, as you can see in the first chart. You see, the growth is really remarkable. The numbers are clear and, uh, and attested the efficacy of this specific medium in communicating, in, in communicating our topics. In fact, impressions and engagement data reveal positive results. By impressions, we mean how many times our posts appeared on someone's screen, while the engagement data refer to how many times a single reader has been actively engaged in our posts, by example, for example, by commenting, liking, sharing or clicking on the post. These numbers are especially remarkable if we keep in mind that we have never had a single sponsored item on our Facebook page. So despite the fact that Facebook's algorithms prioritize paid content, we may see that our data look promising. Also for, for Facebook, we observe that the majority of our followers are Italians, of course, but as we have noticed uh, for the journal's website itself, other countries are represented as well, even if by small numbers, as you can see here. I'd like to visually show you just a few examples of the most uh, uh, engaging articles that we have had uh, uh, so far, at least uh, until uh, April 18th. In this first slide, uh, we can see the chart of both impressions and engagement data of this, about this article. Um, um, in the first slide, so um, the chart uh, of, imp of impressions and engagement data shows actually uh, that there is a natural correspondence uh, between uh, these numbers, between impressions and engagement data. But uh, this correlation is not uh, a one-to-one, -one, uh, is on uh, a one-to-one -one basis. On the left, there is a snapshot of the post, which saw the highest number of impressions, so that is uh, um, 11,618, so this number here, um, 663 clicks on the post, of which 241 led to the website itself, and 225 reactions, of which 39 reposts, for a total of 40 comments. This is the article about the ancient walls climbing. As you can see on our Facebook page, it started a long discussion between pro and con opinions, so this shows uh, how effective the communication of topics which are actually close to everyday life uh, can be. Uh, here you have uh, other two highly engaging posts. Uh, the first is about uh, the USA leaving the UNESCO. And the second one uh, is um, about the restitution of the famous uh, Getty Bronze, uh, or better said, the uh, victorious youth. Uh, social media like Instagram and LinkedIn as well give uh, us um, interesting data. Instagram counts a total of 263 followers, the great majority of them is from Italy. LinkedIn instead is the only one among our social media openly addressing the international community thanks to posts written in English, reaching a total of 452 followers, and almost half of them are not Italian, so that's a clue. Overall, the engagement data and the different kinds of followers' interaction have proven, even in so little time, that the project could indeed be effective uh, as a tool in countering crimes against cultural heritage. Moreover, in the near future, we expect to be able to store the collected reports and data in an open access database for endangered, stolen, damaged and recovered articles, artifacts. So, in conclusion, the Journal of Cultural Heritage Crime is conceived not simply as an information repository or as a showcase for thrilling news, 
but as an interactive platform which aims to reach out to people, make them aware of the many threats to cultural heritage and actively involve them in its protection. Thank you.